Hey kids and grown-ups, this is Sheila from Okanagan County Public Utility District, the PUD. We bring electricity and broadband internet out to our communities. This week, we're working with North Central Regional Library's virtual summer program, and I'm gonna bring a bit of science right to your screen. So in this second video, let's talk about magnets. Now you've probably got some magnets at home, maybe on your refrigerator? I've got some. Well, if you do, go grab a couple of them. We're gonna play around with them. What makes those magnets stick? Well, every magnet has two poles. We call them north and south pole or positive and negative pole. Well, if you line up the opposite poles, they'll stick together. They're total besties. But if you go ahead and flip that around and try to line up the same poles, they push apart from each other and they just don't get along. Check out these magnetic match ring sets we have. If Beth and Jack put the rings on the peg in the right way, they snap right together. We're lining up opposite poles. But if we flip the magnets over, the wrong pole is matching up on the other ring and it pushes away, making the magnet float above it. Here's a fun fact. Here's one way magicians use science to create illusions. Cool, huh? Anyway, as they keep adding other magnets, those magnets push or pull away from each other, which creates this invisible activity in between those magnets. Those teeny tiny invisible electrons, which are part of atoms, and atoms make up everything, they're swirling around like crazy producing magnetic fields. If they force those together, the electrons push away. And then if they release them, they rush back in. And when they do, sometimes those magnetic rings go flying. Anyways, it makes me think of some kind of dance or someone who keeps moving all the time. We say that person has lots of energy, right? Well, that's what electrons have. You can actually reveal a magnetic field with another experiment. I have a couple of magnets. You can just use one a piece of paper and some iron filings. Now, I bought these at the store, but you can make them by filing down an iron nail, but not without parent supervision. So what you do is, you take your magnet or magnets, set them down, take the paper, put that over the top, and start shaking those iron filings out over the top. And they'll start to reveal these really cool patterns, which is actually the patterns of the magnetic fields. With the magnet on the left, you can see the two spiky areas show where the two poles of the magnet are. With the magnet on the right, well, the opposite pole is on the bottom side, so you really only see the spiky areas from the top pole. So check out this magnet. Now once again, if I align the opposite poles, they stick together. In this case, opposite colors. But if I take it and I move it around, and align opposites, it actually floats. And it doesn't just float, it will spin and spin and spin. And well, if it were just sitting there, we'd call that potential energy. But once it moves, there's that kinetic energy. And that's what we really use to do things with. Now, imagine this thing was the size of a bus and it was spinning and spinning and spinning and creating all of that kinetic energy. Well, with the right additional materials, we could take that and turn it into electricity. And we do. Well, I don't turn energy into electricity anyways, but some really awesome scientists and engineers do. I'm gonna show you one example of electricity production, which creates about 70% of the electricity we use in Washington State. And it's clean, it's renewable, it's carbon-free electricity too. Do you know what kind of power I'm talking about? If not, I'll tell you in the next video. See you then.